we have another fantastic top five segment for you guys. Don't you guys love these? I definitely must say, I look hella stylish in black. Maybe I should turn over a new leaf and just finally explore my evil side. But I'll have to see how that goes. Top five decks that are the worst damn thing to play against in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. What are they? Let's find out after you guys stare at this poster from Exodus in the background. Looking hella stancy, by the way. As I said, got a really cool package from them. Can't wait to uh, showcase this for you guys. My mat looks hella cool. All right, you guys know what? It's time for that discussion. The five decks that we all hate playing against, you know what they are? We're gonna start off with stun. Now the concept of stun has been a deck that people look to to slow down the pace of the game and essentially make an attempt to lock you out. It is the bane of the existence of the combo player. If you're a Goki player and your opponent normal summons Inspect Border, oh, you're going to have a fantastic game. This is also the same deck that relies on cards like Macro Cosmo, things like Dimensional Fissure, the all-loved Floodgate concept that we've all come to no and hate. Now, in previous iterations of the deck, they had Royal Oppression that they would use to kind of lock down your opponent's strategy. But playing against Stun really grinds my gears because the mirror match is absurdly slow. They rely on things like Fossil Dyna, Banisher of the Radiance, these monsters that have these large floodgate effects that will try to paralyze you. Now, long since we've gotten things like Infinite Impermanence to try to combat these particular cards, but I will say the concept of stun is still very much real in this day and age, and even if you see some random guy online testing it, or some guy at a regional that's X1, you still must be scared of the deck, because if you lose that very critical dice roll, and they open up a, any sort of large monster with the appropriate protection, and you don't have an out to it, you're going to have what we like to call in the industry a really bad time. So I just wanted to point out I think one of the hardest decks in the current game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to play against is just stun. It doesn't matter how good the deck is. As long as the deck ruins your day and makes it so that you have a very hard chance of winning, then the deck has done what it needs to do. It outgrinds you in the resource pool. Just make sure your potential combo's worthless. And that's honestly what stun sets out to do. So the concept of stun, one of the hardest decks to play against. Now, this is a new combatant as of late. And I've seen this on every question, literally every person that answered this, and it was Altergeist. Now, Altergeist is another flood, Floodgate deck. And within the Floodgates, there's a little thing called Siloquitos. Now, the Altergeist themselves weren't much of a problem until Multifaker came out. Uh, Multifaker allows you to special summon Siloquitos. Siloquitos gives you the ability to bounce any Altergeist card back to your hand, and another face-up card that your opponent has. I believe it's face-up. So, it's once per turn restricted. Oh, thank God for that. But what they ended up giving to Altergeist was their effects can't be negated. They gave them a means to have a very consistent engine. And did I mention that they have a little card called Melozik? And our friend Melozik allows them to attack directly, and at the end of that attack, basically they get to punch something out. Um, so any, any any threat that you have on the board, your opponent just gets to spot removal it for free. Like, think about that. The deck is also, I would consider a stun concept, but it's not the Inspector Border kind of fun that you would see with Fossil Dinos. This is the kind that has a very consistent engine, and in itself, they have Link support to give them access to more terrifying creatures. And they even have a monster on normal summon grants you the ability to set more protection from their deck. This deck also is paired with a lot of hand traps, so making the appropriate decisions and things. Um, I think the hardest part about playing against this deck is when to know when to hit what, and I think that's what makes this deck so scary. Your opponent has a very large resource pool for negations, and the deck does require some amount of thinking to play against. That's what makes the deck so dangerous. If you misplay one step along the way and force your opponent to make the right call before they hit something threatening to you, you're going to have an incredibly bad time. So keep that in mind. Altergeist going on the list of hardest decks to play against. 
Now the next one was brought up to my attention, and I didn't think much about this, but I decided to put it on the video. So we have Crusadia. Now, the best way to play against Crusadia, I'm going to just outright say it, is to make them go first. Your opponent can't do anything if you don't do anything, right? Right? So the concept of Crusadia is to produce something like this guy, which will probably be on the side here. Hello, Equimax. Equimax, you basically will use it in combination with another monster. You don't really care what your opponent does as long as it doesn't set up some sort of negation. And then you're going to attempt to kill your opponent with 8,000 points of damage through the arsenal of support cards that they had. Now, like I said, the best way to play against this deck is by forcing them to go first. Um, they have a couple of plays they can do, but they're not as devastating as not knowing what to do against the deck. But like I said, when your opponent can produce 8,000 points of damage just off of you attempting to play the game, is that is that really fair? I don't think so. This is one of those decks that needs your opponent to do the bare minimum to engage with you. And on that bare minimum, you're probably going to die. <laughs> it's kind of sad when you when you think about the deck because the deck the deck is very cool in concept, but it, it's a going second deck. The deck just stares at you from afar and goes, "Oh hi, you just set a monster. Well, don't mind while I claim the link ladder." and establish this large amount of damage. Now they did try to make the deck fair, and the deck does have its own flaws within itself, but I'm definitely liking the concept that they did for the deck. But the deck is simply harder to play against because you never know when that OTK that they drew the perfect hand for is going to come, and losing that critical dice roll can just cost you the game out of left field for some reason. Now the next one is the concept that we like to call the STD, the self-touching duck. For those of you that don't know, and you probably are staring at a beautiful picture of Morphing Jar over here. STDs are decks that are basically your FTKs. And within the realm of these decks, they do not give a single flying shit what you do as a player. And that's what makes them so dangerous. Unless you are playing something like Frog FTK, for example, or Empty Jar, I have to know as a player when to time my hand traps. If I do not know when to time the activation of my effects, I'm going to be punished and I'm going to lose. Playing against these particular decks, the best thing you need to know is how the deck works. Try to understand the strategy of it. Understand the vocal points of the deck. I cannot tell you how many times people just lose to strategies because one, they're not educated on what they do, and two, they didn't open the hand trap. <laughs> there's, there's really no other way to say it. Um, Konami's done a very good job at trying to check these STDs, and I will, I will give them some credit. Um, they, Empty Jar is literally the last deck to come out, and even so much Chain Burn has been checked in its own self. But being uneducated with these decks and having the random off chance of just getting too owed for absolutely drawing horribly or your opponent just opened up the absolute nuts for you, will lead you to become very discouraged. And in that discouragement, you're going to be very angry at things like that. So FTK decks in general, um, Empty Jar being the current one that I'm bringing up here um, in the current days, current day and age, very frustrating, and they will put mental scars on you for that. Now the next deck, and the last one I wanted to talk about here, and this was, this was a hard one, because I've heard a lot of things. True Draco made the list, there was a lot of things, but I'll probably do one of these on the hardest decks in the format to play against. Now the last one I wanted to put on here is Time Lords. Now the reason I wanted to put this on here is from the strict perspective of what do you do to a bunch of zero zeros that you effectively can't destroy. You can't really do anything. So, one, you can play the game of trying to outdo your opponent's resource pool. Time Lords do chuckle back into the deck, they do disappear on the next turn, which means your opponent's technically going minus one every turn, okay? That's something for you to kind of look for. Number two, infinite impermanence and cards that negate card effects. Something like Skill Drain, yeah, Skill Drain. <laughs> That's the one we're going to go with here. The ability to shut off these cards and other things like that, non-targeting, you know, fun stuff, all of these things. But Time Lords have a burn strategy. They 
very much don't interact with your opponent in the sense that, I mean, you have to play a monster for me to really trigger my Time Lords. At least some of them. I think some of them have the, the battle restriction of a monster, um, if not all of them. I don't know if there's a name that you can just battle your opponent and force them like on the direct attack. But for the most part, you have these 0-0 monsters that all have some sort of devastating effect to you. So I would definitely rank them as one of the hardest decks to play against because if you don't have a really weird way to handle the situation, then you're just going to be staring at your opponent going, I don't know what the hell your deck does, and you're going to have a really bad time. So, But these are the top five worst decks to play against. I'm definitely sure this list will change over time, but for now, I must say, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very interesting creature. Alright guys, you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? Please, leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'm out guys, peace. The ride never ends guys, make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.